<laughs> Hi, man. So let's go. Um, so I'm Jules, and today I will talk to you about cost-effective and easy-to-maintain GraphQL API integration test with Zero Test and Caliban. Uh, it was hard to come with something longer than that. So let's talk quickly about, oops, me. <laughs> so uh, I'm a tech lead at Conductor. Uh, I'm French, and I'm living in uh, Australia for three years now. And um, just I want to say two words about my company, uh, Conductor. So we are making tool on top, uh, tools on top of Apache Kafka to make your everyday work with Apache Kafka easier and so to, for you to be more productive. You will see it's relevant with a talk. That's why I'm saying it. Uh, okay? Okay. So the subject of my talk is real-world engineering. Um, and so talking about integration tests is a good excuse for me to talk about real-world engineering, and uh, it's like both ways. Real-world engineering is a good excuse for me to talk about what we are actually doing in my team. Because what I will present you today is actually how we are writing integration tests uh, in today, even with a product we are working on for a while now. So, just a disclaimer before to start, uh, this is not a zero talk and this is not a GraphQL talk. I'm sorry. Um, I don't have enough time to talk about what is the IO and how it works, and I don't have enough time to talk about GraphQL and what it is and how it works. So, but if you are interested in GraphQL subject, especially like, come to talk to me after the, 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 the presentation because I have another version of the slide um, with some GraphQL-like pros and cons. So don't hesitate to come to me. So the plan for today, I will talk about the team quickly, about the product, the technology, the problem, the analysis, contribution, composition, conclusion. Easy. So um, let's talk about the team. And so why, why do I want to talk to, uh, today about my team? Is because to me, uh, real-world engineering is, re is just people. Just pay call, working together to make a software. And so this is the amazing people of my team. I'm so happy because we have such a great team. And so look around you today in the conference because some of them are here today at the conference. Go talk to them. They are amazing people. They are brilliant and very nice. So never, don't hesitate to do it. <laughs> Taking a photo. So yeah, don't hesitate to go. Okay? Um, so let's move on. Let's talk about the product that our team is making. So the product is, is named Console. And um, as, as I was telling you, our company is making tools on top of Apache Kafka for you to be more productive. And so console is, uh, let's say, the beautiful interface that is missing on top of Apache Kafka. And so um, for you to be able to debug, for you to be able to understand what's going on into Apache Kafka, because Apache Kafka can be sometimes kind of a black box. It's really hard to understand what's going on, what is the data flowing in there, is the data correct, can I maybe produce something to see what's happening behind and stuff. And so this project console is doing everything for you like this, okay? So this is what we are doing. And what I will talk about today is uh, integration test of GraphQL API. This is made with GraphQL API, and this is how we are testing, uh, writing our integration test, okay? And of course, we have a black mode. <laughs> so if, if, if you want to give it a try, uh, we have a SaaS version. So just go on, the, on this URL, create an account, and you just can play with it, OK? Have fun. Um, I'm on time. I'm even too fast. Mm. So let's talk about technologies. We are engineers. We love technology. So as I was telling you, um, we have chose chosen, I don't know, um, to use GraphQL. And so we have a front-end in TypeScript and React because it's a web app. And in between the front-end and the back-end, we have GraphQL. And I don't have enough time to talk about why it's a great choice. Um, but come again, come to talk to me uh, after. It will be a pleasure. Um, next slide. And so, um, yeah, nothing much to say here. Scala, ZIO. Um, it's, it's, Scala and ZIO are the two big technologies in our company, uh, at least for backend. Uh, and so Caliban was just the logical choice, choice to, to, to make a GraphQL API. But you will see uh, Caliban plays a big role in the story I, I will tell you about today. Okay? So um, what, what, what's the problem? Why my talk? And, and, and so the problem is uh, Kafka. We are making a tool on top of Kafka. And so Kafka is amazing. It's great. But Kafka is complicated. Kafka sometimes is weird. 
And we are making a software for you to debug Kafka. For you, when your Kafka is in a weird state, our software must continue to work to help you to debug your Kafka. Um, and so we have to be resilient uh, more than Kafka, if it's possible. I don't know. <laughs> um, and, and, and so um, Kafka can be weird sometimes. And so for us, it's, it's important to write tests. And so we need to write unit tests, of course, but um, because Kafka is so weird, we have to write tests that are testing everything with Kafka, very, very real instance of Kafka. And this kind of test, it's called integration test. So uh, on this thing, you have like a test pyramid, you have unit test, that's fast to write, fast to run, and then you have service test, but it's integration test, and they are slower to write, slower to, 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 to run, and a pain to, 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 to maintain and write, and then you have UI test, like end-to-end -end test. We will not talk about this today. And so, because we are making a tool on top of Kafka, we have to test with a real Kafka instance to be sure that um, the our software is working correctly with Kafka. When there is a new version of Kafka, it's still working correctly. It's still, I don't know, if this Kafka is in this weird state, it's, our software is continuing to work. So this is really important for us to, to write this integration test. But they are a pain to write, and they are a pain to maintain. So how to make them not too much pain. So this is, uh, now we'll talk about the analysis of the solutions. So how to make an integration test. There are many ways. So in our lives, we don't always know what we want, but we usually know what we don't want anymore. It's called experience. Uh, in our career, we have seen many ways. I have seen many ways to write integration tests and I know what I don't want anymore. And what I'm showing you here is called an HTTP file. It's something that JetBrains invented. And so you can see you, you write a request over there, and then you write a bunch of JavaScript to write tests. And like IntelliJ is not the only software to provide this feature. Like you, you, have also Postman, you have also Postman that is providing the same kind of, uh, of feature. And so, um, I'm not a fan. I've seen this in, in companies, in some companies. They were really using this to write their uh, integration test. They were running these files into a CI to validate their staging environment and stuff. And let's, let's be honest, I'm not a big fan. And there's one thing I'm sure, absolutely sure, is I don't want to, to write JavaScript. Why would I write correct program and incorrect tests? That makes no sense. So, no, no JavaScript, uh, no way. So how, how can we... Um, make them. Oops. Next. Come on. Uh, trop fast. Too fast. Okay. So what do we want? And so when I'm asking that, I'm asking that at a higher level. Is what do I? What kind of properties do I want to, for my solution? And and then can I find a solution that matches my properties? And so I don't want to write my integration things in a repo. I want to them, write them in the same repo because I want one pair, not two. I don't want to switch between IDEs, windows. So same, same repo, I think, is like write your integration test alongside your code and add it in the same PR at the same time. So just simple, just makes sense. Then second thing is I want to use the same tool. I'm using amazing tools. I'm using Scala, I'm using ZIO, I'm using ZIO test to write my unit test, so can I use the same tools? And the response is yes. I can use Scala and ZIO test to write my, my, my integration test, and we will see that later. Um, next. Yes. And you know, with uh, OpenAPI and Tapir, you can generate clients out of your documentation, out of your OpenAPI documentation. And so in GraphQL, you have a schema. Can we generate a client out of the schema so that when I want to write the request to my APIs, so my, write my integration tests, um, can I use this generated client? So I don't have to write it, basically. I'm just lazy. I don't want to write another thing if it can be generated, right? Next. So what, what, what is possible? Um, and is it possible with Caliban, and what is possible? And so when we were looking at what was possible, uh, Caliban was already able to generate the schema out of the code of your server. So right, easy, cool. And also another thing is Caliban was also having an SBT plugin that was, sorry, that was able to generate a GraphQL client out of the schema. 
So can we merge both to just generate the, the client? I, do, I don't need the schema in my test. I don't care about the schema in my test. So can we combine the two um, to make it work? Or can we even like maybe generate the client code out of the server code? And the, repo, the, the answer sorry, was yes, it's possible. And it was already possible. And so it was possible, but it was not so easy to do. And so that's where uh, my contribution comes in. Oh, I'm going too fast. <laughs> Let's slow down a bit, sorry. And so because it was possible already in Caliban, but not so easy to do and really hard to automate, um, I contributed to something. And so basically, what I contributed to is a plugin. It's an SBT plugin. So it's called, this is the a documentation of Caliban, and this is the section dedicated to the plugin I wrote. So this plugin is, is named Compile Time Caliban. So why is it named Compile Time Caliban? Because the previous plugin was named Caliban plugin. And, and so I was like, okay, mine is just generating things like Compile Time, so let, let's call it Compile Time Caliban plugin. And actually, it's two plugins that are working together. So when you're configuring your project with this, you need to configure your two uh, plugins, uh, I will not detail, we don't care, but, um, and then you will be able to, to generate your clients. So how does it work? Well, how does it work for you as a user? Well, it's simple. You read the, the, the documentation, as you always do, right? And then you configure the plugins, and then you recompile, and boom, you have a client. That's it, and which is uh, for your API. And, and that's as simple as that. And when you are changing your API code, oh, sorry your API code, um, your client is uh, recompiled and regenerated. Regenerated and recompiled. So that's as simple as that. So um, how does it work now internally, you might wonder. Well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing is, I don't know how it works, because I just wrote a plugin, an SBT plugin, that is reusing what was already possible in Caliban. So Pierre Ricarda, Ricada is the main author of Caliban, and so him and the Caliban community, they made an amazing work, like Caliban is incredible. And so I was just like, when I was looking for how to make this, I went on the ZIO Discord in their channel, and I was like, hey, can we do this, guys? And they were like, yes, we can, okay, but it's kind of tedious now, but yes, we can. Oh, I would like to write a plugin about to make this uh, easy. And, and they helped me, and so, yeah, I just wrote the plugin to automate something, that's it. That was already possible. And so now if you want to help, there is one bug that I would like to fix, but I don't have enough time to fix it. Uh, basically, we are trying to be smart. We don't regenerate the client each time we are, we are, you are recompiling. You know Scala, you have this incremental compilation, which means that when you have compiled once a file, you don't need to recompile it. And so at the beginning of this plugin, each time you, are, you were recompiling your code, it was dumb, and so it was re regenerating your client. And so we made it smart a bit, but there are still a few things that the plugin does not understand, and it doesn't know, it doesn't understand that it has to regenerate the client. So this is very well explained here in, in this issue 1052. Um, so if you want to help, you can talk to me. You can come to talk to me on Twitter, on the IO, uh, Discord, on Discord directly. Um, yeah, so I would love to have some help on this one. Mm. And so now we know what we want. We want integration test in the same repo. We want uh, to use the same tool, ZIO, uh, ZIO test, Scala. And we know that we can generate the client out of our server code. So, and we can automate it because it's a plugin, so it's easy. You just have to compile. And so now, let's see how you compose uh, everything to write your integration tests. And so I will, do I have enough time to go into details in this? Yeah, I have some time. So this schema is a schema of SBT configuration, you see build.sbt. And so you have SBT modules. I don't know if you're familiar with SBT modules. You should, it's really, really amazing. And so you'll have three modules. You have your API module containing your server code, server API code. And you will have your um, 
client module that where your client code will be generated to, and then you, you, you make a, a third module, integration test module, which will depend on both, and you can write your integration test in, in this uh, third module. So that's it. And so you need to, comp to configure the compile time server and the compile time client plugins in the, in, the, in the project, that's it. And so if we have a look at what it looks like, it's kind of really easy. So these two examples are took from um, the, the, the documentation, Caliban documentation, to how to configure the, the compile time Caliban plugin. And so this is a very basic example, but they are, they are way enough. And so then you, you just configure your API, your client module, and then your integration test module, and you can write your test. That's as simple as that. So I want to show you some code, and this is real code. I was too lazy to create um, um, an example, so I copied some code. So Mathieu, you might <laughs> recognize your work. Uh, <laughs> and so this test uh, is out of a, a suite which is uh, testing our consumer group API. So you know you have consumer groups in, um, in Kafka, and we have an API to query them. And so this test is just simple. It's like, okay, when there are no consumer group in Kafka, we should get no uh, consumer group back in the API. So that's as simple as that. And I will not go through all li lines of code. Um, I will uh, detail three things in this code. So let's go through them. So the first thing is how we write the queries. Um, and here we will, reuse, we will use the code we generated. And so you see there is this queries uh, object with these consumer group functions. And we will pass to it a cluster ID because we want to query the cluster uh, groups from this cluster, this Kafka cluster. And we will pass it a, a third thing. I have a uh, beautiful this, which is the actual um, fields we want to query out of the graph, out of the schema, out of the GraphQL API. Okay? Because when you go do a query, you say, I want this object and this field into the object. And so here I just want one field. It's called all names. Okay, that's just as simple as that. So here I am writing a query with a generated code. That's as simple as that. Okay. Then I will not detail how we execute it because it's, it can be a bit like it's too much code for for not really interesting. You just like ask the interpreter of Caliban to execute your query. That's as simple as that. Um, and so, but then the, the the thing I want to show you is how we are asserting the results. So. In a GraphQL um, response, you have two channels. You have the error channel, errors channel, which is a list of errors, and you have a data, a data channel. Okay, um, and so here I'm just using normal ZIO test features, which is just the assert and the is empty, and all of this comes from uh, ZIO test. And so I assert that the result error is empty, the channel of error is empty. I have no error, and then. I just assert, I just test the, the data, and I just transform this data into JSON. That, that's something provided by Caliban. You can uh, transform this data into a JSON, and I'm compared to another JSON. So the JSON thing here, it's, uh, it's something from Sarce. Um, it's, uh, how is it called? Um, I don't know. Hmm? Inter? Literal, so, thank you. Sarce literal. Uh, it's quite useful because you can write things like this, and it's, uh, it's check at compile time, and so you can see, okay, my data is returning this. So that's as simple as it. Do I have more time? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, boom. And the third thing, and last thing, I want to show you about this test is uh, it's an integration test, so it's testing on a real Kafka instance, and so the issue with Kafka is it's really slow to start. So I cannot afford, we cannot afford to start a Kafka instance for each test. So here you can see that I start this thing on this uh, parenthesis here, which is the suit parenthesis. And so it means that this instance, the, the inject sum shared, is a function from the IO test that will start an instance of a Kafka layer. Here my Kafka layer is Kafka embedded Kafka. And um, run all the, the tests inside this suit and then close the, the Kafka instance for me. And so I can just start one, run many tests, and they are not, so it's not too slow, uh, and, 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 and then close it like automatically. I don't have to care about this. Okay? So, the conclusion now about this is 
is it a perfect solution to write? Is it the perfect solution to write integration? Of course. I found the solution, so of course it's perfect. No, of course not. Nothing is perfect. But so that's a stupid question. Uh, that was that was a trap. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> nothing's perfect, uh, but it's quite good. It's quite good. When you you are evolving your API, basically the, f the the code is not compiling anymore, and you have to update your test. That's it. That's as simple as that. You are reusing the power of Scala, and that's why um, it's always amazing to do that. Um, then, uh, second point about this talk, maybe conclusion, is real-world engineering needs a lot of people. And that's why I talk about many people in this talk, my team, uh, Pierre Ricada, the Caliban community, because I would not have been able to write this SBT plugin without the help of the Caliban community and Pierre Ricada. I, they were super helpful, so when you need help, don't never hesitate to go into a Discord, ZIO Discord, type level Discord, Scala Discord, and ask for help. It's really important. Engineering is people. We're helping each other. Um, third thing, Scala, ZIO test, Caliban. Well, it's a great combination. I can write everything with just these three technologies. I don't have many, many, many uh, technologies to learn, just these three, and I can do unit test, integration test, and I can write any, everything. So that's kind of great. And last point is SBT. So uh, Martin Odersky was talking about uh, SBT responding, and he was saying that he was not satisfied with it. And I wrote four plugins. It was my fourth one, this one. Four SBT plugins in my life. And this one was my most ambitious one. It's five, 400 lines of code, so it's not big at all. But it took me a week to write this form and line of code because it's super hard to make it compile. Like you have this task thing, which is a macro, and it's a hell. So it's really hard to write a plugin. Don't be too ambitious when you, if you have the idea, oh, I will write this plugin, that will automate all of this. Yeah, sure, good luck. <laughs> really. So yeah, be careful with SBT plugin. So that's all for me. Thank you very much. So I think we have time for questions. Yeah, questions. Mm. I have a question for you is, who is uh, doing GraphQL? Who is making a GraphQL period right now? To there, to there. I know you guys are using the plugin I wrote. <laughs> One over there, but he's in my team. <laughs> OK. Um, Cool. And um, I, I removed some slides about GraphQL because I, I was not having enough time. But um, there is really one great thing about uh, GraphQL is the schema. I'm really in love with the schema because uh, we are Scala developer, we love types, and the schema is basically your type signature of your API. Um, it's, it's insane. It's so great. We, um, so we have this front end and this back end, and we are, when, so, we are like component-based in a way. So the front end is a component on, of, our, of our app, of console, and the back end is a component of our app. Both are versioned. So when we are versioning the back end, we are registering a new version of the schema related to this version of the back end in a schema registry, so that the front end can use the schema from the schema registry and not at all from the back end. They don't care about the back end. And, 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 and so when I want to make a new version of my app, I, I have a separate repo with a separate CI. I create a, a new version, but it's not the version of the backend or not the version of the frontend. It's the version of the app composed of two versions of one version of the frontend, one version of the backend. And my CI is validating that the request of my frontend are valid with a version of my backend. I cannot build a version of my app where the request of my frontend are not valid with my API. That's something amazing. That's like, you are compiling your application, kind of. And that, so I'm, I'm, I'm really in love with the schema. I think it's one, one of the great things. Another great thing is the subscription. Subscription are really great. We are making uh, something on top of Kafka. Kafka is a data streaming thing. So we need to stream data to the front end. And you have subscription for that. It's really easy. It's WebSockets made easy. It's really nice. So yeah. Do you have questions? Sorry. Oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much.